So today we have an amazing panel here, and uh, it's uh, very serendipitous to have a big data discussion before dinner. Uh, so we'll try our best to hold the audience. Uh, we have an amazing panel at hand here with extensive background from banking to programmatic buying, uh, with healthcare as well. I was just discussing with Ashish what they're trying to solve for at Narana Health. Uh, so today, we'll, uh, before I kick off the session, I have, a, I have a, uh, a bowl. You can actually drop in your questions. I don't know if we'll have time to answer all questions. But if you could, the bowl is being passed around with a notepad and a pen in it. Prerna, could you raise your hand, please? So she's going to pass the bowl. If you could, ha if you have any questions regarding big data, smart data, please drop in a question there. And towards the end, we'll try to pick them up and answer them. Uh, and the way that we've structured this uh, panel is we have a couple of questions, about four or five of them. The panel members are just going to going to express their expertise in that. Uh, then we have a rapid round, a rapid fire questions, which hopefully is fun as well. And then we will cool off with a few questions which actually help uh, businesses that are looking to get into the journey or have already started their journey in big data or smart data uh, and put that through as well. Uh, I just want to put, up, put the note there that this is a very sensitive uh, topic for many businesses because these projects are usually uh, uh, confidential, so we are not getting into the detail for any business, but taking the expertise view, how they may have seen other businesses or their expertise in projects that they have seen will be expressed today. Uh, without further ado, uh, my name is Santosh. I uh, I head the Densu CXM practice in India. Uh, with my back, I am mostly a techie. I have. Uh, uh, worked through and through in technologies such as VMware and Amazon and before founding. We have one of my companies is Socrates. Uh, we founded that business with the, with the notion of uh, big data when it was not even a moniker those days. Uh, and uh, I've overseen projects across automotive, uh, CPG segment as well. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk to, if, if time permits, talk to a few case in points that I have addressed. Uh, I'll pass on the baton to Mihir. Uh, to introduce uh, himself as well as talk about uh, his twist with big data and smart data. Santosh, till then, who gets the hamper for the rapid fire? Uh, am I audible? Sorry. <laughs> Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah? OK. Perfect. Check. I'm Mihir. Uh, I look at marketing for the online education unit of NMMS University. Uh, uh, I'm passionate, uh, to, I'm passionate towards technology and uh, data as a marketer. It's slightly different than uh, what probably uh, I should have done. But my, my academics background was technology, and I think I wanted to become a uh, you know, like a software developer at some point of time in my life before I moved into marketing. So that, that still remains in there and hence, uh, you know, I touch on uh, uh, my tech team more often than I should. Theo. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm Uthio. I uh, head uh, digital marketing, MarTech, uh, liabilities and propositions uh, at Yes Bank. Uh, been a career marketeer, been in BFSI for donkey's years now. Um, so my passion is uh, actually consumer behavior and that's what uh, drew me into marketing. So when I started off, obviously there was very little of digital marketing. Uh, but over a period of time, uh, you know, the topic that we are speaking about, data. Data is behind uh, a lot of the consumer insights that you draw and how we understand consumer behavior. And that's what's drawn me more towards the digital marketing side of things. Um, so, you know, looking forward to a fantastic conversation ahead. Thank you. Siddharth, over to you. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Siddharth. I had uh, a business called MIQ. Um, so we are into programmatic and data uh, and 
Uh, my journey has been with tech industry for a long time. I was earlier at IBM and Microsoft in the tech business. And uh, uh, in the Microsoft uh, days, I saw all the data migrating into cloud. And that's where really the big data journey started. Uh, and uh, then uh, I worked at Google. And uh, I was heading Criteo's business in India as well. And I realized that uh, I think there is a, a very important need for these platforms to have the data layer and convert that big data into smart data so that that customization layer for brands comes into play. Uh, and that's where, uh, you know, at MIQ, we do a very exciting work uh, in customization. We have a global data lake. Uh, we have 600 million consumers data lake in the India market. Uh, and we are able to have a lot of third party data partnerships all, uh, all put into a data lake through a data studio. And um, all this magic is, of course, done by our data science team. Uh, I look after the business part. Uh, but it's fascinating to see how we are able to enrich uh, the first party data with our data lake and then figure out what is the right consumer segment for a brand. How, how do we take the planning and targeting to the next level? How do we look at the data analytics from a marketing perspective also to the next level? Uh, and uh, what I also realize is that media is kind of becoming a bit of commodity. And the data layer and the analytics, when it is get attached with media, then a lot of value comes into it. And that's where uh, we are able to customize it for a lot of our clients. Uh, and we, we, uh, we work with our agency partners very, very closely on that. Uh, we'll talk about a few case studies also. But yeah, this has been my big data to smart data journey. Yes. Thanks. I am Dr. Ashish. Uh, just an asterisk. Uh, please don't call me in any emergencies. I'm just a PhD. Uh, moving on, I'm trying, I'm working with Narayana Health, and we are trying to shift from just being known as a hospital brand to an integrated healthcare brand. I think we've spent enough. Let's move on. Fair enough. Uh, so, actually, the first question goes to you, Ashish. <laughs> so, in the pharma space uh, or healthcare, what, what, do you, uh, what do you feel is smart data? And uh, how is it different from big data? Uh, can you live without either of them? Or basically just open-ended, what does it mean to healthcare, essentially? What big data to smart data is? So smart data, as a definition, we are still trying to understand, and, and I think a lot of us. Uh, but from a big data point of view, I think um, it's one of, one of the industry uh, that actually works on personalization, because each and every individual data is different. And uh, there are more than 6,000 data points for your healthcare that needs to be managed or mapped uh, over the course until the time you are 40 years old. Mm. Okay, so if you're talking about that kind of data points right. for almost, let's to start with 1.4 billion of us, that means it's huge, huge, huge volume that you are, uh, you're, you're, you know, you're uh, playing with. Now, uh, from understanding or movement from big to smart, I think we were, while the big data came to the entire for, uh, in the forefront, we were already applying a lot of um, academic filters of, by ourselves, right? We were saying, okay, fine, even if I'm seeing this, there can be certain other ways to look at it. And I think that is what transformed into looking the right uh, cohorts. Not all 6,000 might be important for you, given your age. Right. Uh, not all 6,000 might be applicable to you given your geography, uh, given your gender, given your DNA. So from that point of view, you have to have to be smart in terms of knowing which are the ones that move in the direction with your age. So that's how, uh, that's how we plan to kind of uh, utilize it for the betterment and not bringing you to hospitals. Got it, got it. That's a pretty interesting case. Uh, we were just talking about how uh, preventive is by itself a segment of its own, and using smart data there is something that can trigger. Uh, Uteo, so what, what, what is your interest with big data and smart data? What is, how, how do you differentiate that in the, in the FSI, BFSI space? Um, so uh, I'll take uh, possibly one step back. And I will try and draw an analogy in terms of uh, what big data and smart data means to me, at least. Uh, so every monsoon season, there is a fair amount of media coverage 
in terms of you know how much rain what millimeters of rain the city has received right and then there is also coverage in terms of you know what is the percentage of the lake levels which supply water uh, into mumbai right so every day you have a news item saying vaitarana is at 80% and you know modak sagar is at 60% etc etc uh, now obviously what finally we are trying to achieve or what finally we are interested in as consumers is the water which comes into our homes right uh, now for me the water the data is the rainfall the water which is getting accumulated in the lakes is big data there is some amount of filtration of that data which is happening while that water is being transported to your house right which maybe the municipality is doing or the water supplier is doing then once it reaches your house you do another level of filtration through your water purifiers before that water comes to your glass and it becomes consumable for you right that is smart data something which is consumable which helps me quench my thirst which helps me get to what i want out of this entire uh, you know universe of from rainwater to lakes to water supply to coming into your glass right and that's uh, for me how i look at big data and smart data now i would say smart data is possibly something which has been jargonized a little bit uh, it is something which inherently we have always been doing right the vast amount of data that we accumulate all of us study that data we work with that data to drive the outcomes that we are trying to drive for our respective businesses uh, in various ways now maybe a lot of it was a lot of manual intervention manual analytics that we were doing and we were doing all the analytical models now you have a lot of algorithms which is helping you filter out the data and give you what is actually consumable to you the reason this is absolutely required is also because the volume of data is so huge there's two and a half three quintillion bytes of data which is getting generated every single day in the world right now obviously we cannot store so much of data and storage costs are going up uh, by the day so how do we then define what are the uh, data signals which we want to consume which we want to retain mm. which we then want to filter and make it into actionable intelligence which will help us drive the outcomes that we want so that's what big data and smart data is for me. nice that's a fantastic analogy actually to put this in perspective as well how and said here i would love to know how in the programmatic world and in media buying like how is how is this of course we are crunching a lot of numbers uh, we are we are measuring our success with qpss how is it that the big data is more like consumed and how does this make it make our smart data perspectives or rather make our campaigns better or smarter so can you just give your perspective yeah the same we, we were discussing this right yeah. so uh, you know we have very interesting case study uh, with luminous inverters so it, it's a it's a category where you know uh, you don't get up in the morning and say that today i want i aspire to buy an inverter right it's a utility um, but uh, uh, what you want to do is you want to reach out to the consumer when they are really thinking about the category and thinking about your brand also probably so uh, for this category what we did was we found out a government website where there is lot of data on uh, scheduled power cuts across india uh, right mm. and so uh, our engineering team created a crawler and got that data and fed it into the dsp uh, right uh, so this is an example of converting big data into smart data so uh, you know as an example if in jaipur 2 to 6 pm on sunday there is a power cut scheduled so the campaign will go live at 2 pm you will see the ad on your mobile uh, during that time and uh, it is also uh, a dynamic creative in terms of the language is vernacular so it will be in hindi and it, geo contextual intelligence is also there so it will also tell you the nearest address of luminous inverter dealer where you can go and buy the 
luminous inverter. Uh, and for unscheduled power cuts, what happens is uh, consumers will tweet, right? When, when I'm, you know, in my locality, when power goes off in, uh, to express my frustration, probably I will tweet or, uh, so we collected all that data as well. So even for unscheduled power cuts, we were able to, uh, you know, take the campaign uh, in those areas in the right way. And so uh, the campaign was a big success because consumers really uh, got their information in the right context when they're really thinking about having a power inverter, uh, 6x times benchmarks, uh, huge amounts of footfalls, huge amounts of sales increase as well. And the agency with whom we did, they won MVs and a lot of other awards as well. So, uh, so you know, that's the power of converting big data into the right data, as you rightly said. Right. And then I was able to really uh, give the right information to the consumer at exactly the right time. Fair enough. Actually, the part that I resonate the most is that before we try to solve, a, like getting into solving a big data or what AI or smart data essentially, I think the bigger ask is what is the core problem and, and what can, can data at times need not even solve, solve the problem, but is there enough, again, see, anything with big data needs volumes of data to put this together. Uh, and then comes the ability to, if there is a volume of data, then taking that data, coming, making smarter insights off of it. But the core thing is identifying what the core problem is and then tracing it back. And he, here, uh, we'd love to understand how EdTech is kind of taking this shape up and what's sure. the... You are taking me away from <laughs> marketing a little bit, but then uh, I think Siddharth uh, will always do a better uh, you know, justice to marketing than me, right? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, the first first premise that, you know, which all of us, uh, you know, understand is, uh, you know, like, if we go back in time, there was data, but there was not so much. And then, then, then we got ability uh, to store a lot more data, and we started storing a lot more data. So we became hungry for data, and in our hunger, we, we started collecting so much data that uh, we weren't able to look at, right? Uh, when, 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 you, uh, when you collect so much of what you can't utilize is when you have a, a bit of a trouble, right? So, uh, while, you know, that is true, there were, there were still, uh, you know, as mentioned by Mr. Day, right, that there were, there were still folks who will look at the data, you know, create filters and, and try to make meaning out of that and, and then utilize it. Now, eventually, uh, we've come to a time when I think we've come to a time where all of us don't have patience, right? Mm. We don't want to watch a, a, a long form video. We want to see a short form Absolutely. video. And Shorts we and don't want to spend hours running a report on uh, SPSS and, and wait for something to come next morning. We want to look at some, some uh, you know, insight right away, right? So that's, that's where uh, we, we, I think all of us want to move towards. I don't think uh, all of us have moved there yet. We, we have a lot of data, but uh, moving towards making meaning out of that data and using probably AI to uh, try and look at the data and answer some of our question is uh, what in my mind smart uh, data, the term should uh, mm -hmm. try and look at, right? Now, now uh, the premise which you were talking about, right, is the most critical premise. Earlier, uh, when you were trying to filter out, you had a question, you had a hypothesis, and you were looking at that hypothesis, hypothesis to find out an and answer. The, for it, right? the that premise doesn't change, right? So if you're gonna have uh, AI on top of your, uh, you know, big data, and uh, it's not gonna do anything unless you ask AI, you know, the right question, what the right question, uh, or what the right hypothesis is, right? And and then you'll get a certain uh, in, you know data as an output which which is input for your thought process and then you'll have to still hmm. you know think through whether that makes sense to you or not right and i'll give you an example of marketing side first to uh, you know, like if you look at any uh, you know media analysis tool and try to understand what your audience does okay and most often uh, you say hey my audience is interested in entertainment uh, my audience is interested in music. 
but that's like given that's like mm. 90 95% of the, the internet population yeah. right that that's that's uh, just information for me and it's not smart right now i have to figure out what are the other things that uh, the data is talking about and look at what's the right thing to do right for ad tech you know it's slightly away from marketing for me right but uh, i think there's there's a lot of room for uh, you know education uh, providers right i'm not say i'm not saying ad tech only i'm saying education providers to try and look at the data that they have hmm. to identify how they can solve for some real problem right the real problem could be hey you know uh, my faculty has a very good rating but uh, you know the students are not sailing through the exam so, you know is there a drop rate in the mm. uh, lectures that they attend and things like that right or the the other way around right my faculty has a very poor rating but everybody is stuck around through the lecture did yeah. he did he like not give them a very good score yeah. right and and you know this this is where he'll probably make i mean this few examples right but this is where it'll probably make sense for somebody to look at the data and identify what the real problem is right because would you look at uh, uh you know without uh, putting intelligence will will probably drive you towards things you know which which is absolutely bizarre hmm. right. fair enough <laughs> But in this market, right, uh, which is, uh, so in India specifically, uh, again, we are, we, have, we are now the largest uh, in population as well. And the country is mostly focused on uh, branding and uh, identifying, mostly the problems are towards customer acquisition, right? Uh, what is, and here, what, what, what should, why would businesses invest uh, and in big data? Actually, what is it? How does that enhance the end consumer experience through big data? Uh, should 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 the focus be like because if your core problem is customer acquisition and brand, branding solves that to a large extent, but how has big data and AI helped in enhancing consumer experience and as a result in, in improved customer acquisition? or retention for that matter. So is that, uh, what's your take on that? Um, fantastic question. Um, so, you know, when we speak about, so let, let's start with data, then arrive at big data, and then try and answer the question. So, you know, each of us, all our organizations, we have our internal source of data, right? So, say for example, in a bank, we know the transaction data of each of our customers. And you know there are millions of transactions which are happening every single day, right? How do I make sense of those millions of transactions? Can I afford to sit through each and every transaction no, and yeah. figure out right. what is happening? Now, that is data which I have with me. That data will give me some sort of a sense of how Santosh is as a person, for example, right? But then the way Santosh interacts with a bank or uses his credit card does not define who Santosh is, mm. right? So how is he interacting, say, for example, on social media websites, right? Within social media websites, let's go you know, one level further. Am I the same person? when I am on Instagram or Twitter versus the same person when I'm on LinkedIn, mm. right? So there are a multitude of data sources which help me understand what Santosh is, what is he looking for, what are his, say, passions, interests, etc. And can I then utilize that data to figure out that Santosh is planning a vacation, and therefore, should I pitch and travel insurance to Santosh at this point in time? That's yeah. where you know that yeah. the journey from data to big data to assimilation to filtration, yes. and finally, targeting yeah. the person at the right moment at the right time comes right. through. And that's where I think smart data comes in. 
Fair yes. just, I'll just pitch in. So rather than pitching him the travel insurance, yeah. pitch him how to make money for that travel. I think you will win him for, for life. <laughs> <laughs> so while, while you're on it, actually. So here is again in the space, right, uh, of, of healthcare. Uh, so does it board, up, board upon to actually invest into big data and smart data to actually do customer acquisition or retention? How, how does that play in, in the perspective of, of... See, as a brand, we don't want you to come again. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. Uh, and that's our philosophy as well and for the past couple of decades. And I think we're going we're gonna to be on the same path. But uh, coming back to the question, I would not see it as acquisition or retention. Let's look at it as your journey of healthcare. Mm -hmm. We are currently working towards solving the problem of what next and giving you well in advance the things that can allow you to negate what next means. What next? Fair okay, L just like how it works in e -com, what's the best next offer, offer right. uh, we change it to by saying that what is the next negative that can come, but these are the four solutions that can definitely, if you follow, can right. definitely make that, those negative go away. And, and in essence, how does this improve customer experience or in this, I mean, I don't want to say patient experience, but how does this improve the customer it's experience? It's absolutely a consumer right. experience. Uh, but uh, see, just like how he said that tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm not going to talk about buying an inverter. And the whole experience of healthcare is under stress. You're not happy paying that money, mm. right? Now, if you're taking out that stress out of that equation, and if as a brand you're about to do that, uh, able to do that, then that means I think from our point of view, at least inside out, you have delivered the best consumer experience. Mm -hmm. And this will start getting understood by patients yeah. or consumers over the, say, couple of years Correct. or say a decade or so. But that's our intention. And, and that's so definitely add to loyalty. I, as I was going to say, advocacy of, of brand and the campaign, essentially. Uh, I just want to quickly add here. So yes. uh, there's a different case study which we have, which is, you know, not consumer acquisition. But so there's a uh, uh, client of ours, cab uh, player in US market. And so they were seeing this consumer behavior that some consumers would book a cab, but they will not turn up. So what we did was we, we basically understood the profile when okay. we did a breakage analysis. And we said that, you know, okay, uh, for marketing channels and even from an organic perspective also, let us not reach out to these consumers. Right. Right. So it's right. the opposite so of consumer acquisition. Yeah. As a use case from yeah. there. Yeah. True, true. And what I have also seen is uh, in many of these cases, if you're able to harness the power of this, you can create the, the ideal customer journey and, and even devise those trigger points. Uh, to actually make make those who probably are in the same cohort but have not taken that journey. And as a result, one is suppression use case, the others are identifying what the next best offer or next best action could be and take that up from therein. But Mihir, tell me one thing, like if a business needs to discuss or kind of get into this journey of a, like should they, should they explore a build, their, build it on their own and of course, I'm going, to, I'm going to get to you very soon, but because you've taken that journey through. But should they build versus buy? Uh, how, how should a business decide? Uh, when I say build versus buy, here is where, see, building the entire infrastructure of, of big data requires, requires sig significant vision as opposed to, I mean, monies to do so, but here I'm asking what, what would be the priority index to actually build versus buy for business to take up this, this humongous task of big data and AI? Oh, yeah, yeah, Mike. Sorry, I was in a hurry to try and uh, tell you my thoughts. I forgot the mic, yeah. So, uh, see, it's, it's actually not build versus buy, right? Few things you'll have to buy, few things you'll have to build, uh, and eventually, uh, you know, like for example, if you want to, uh, you know, store your data, unless unless you are Amazon or Google or Facebook, you don't want to build, uh, you know, like uh, I mean, unless your data is so much, you don't want to build a build a solution to 
uh, store your data, right? You, you, you lease it out from AWS, mm -hmm. you lease it out from Azure, uh, you lease it out from Google, and, and then or, or anybody else, right? And then start, start your journey of storing the data, right? But, but that's, that's about uh, storing the data, big data, uh, collection, right? You can, you can probably buy some collection solutions, uh, and, and that, that's, that's fine, right? But when, when you want to get into the journey of uh, collecting data to making meaning out of that, right, or to churn that, there will be few off-shelf solutions which you can purchase, but, but in a lot of cases, you will not be able to get an off-shelf off -shelf solution, right? Then mm. you'll have to uh, definitely go for a build now. Build mm. doesn't necessarily mean that you build it yourself. You can hire a tech partner to build it build for it you. Right. Right. But, but yeah, it's, it's a mix of uh, both that, that should work in most cases. Right. Um, unless you're very small and you know that there's something for your industry yeah. which is off-shelf ready, available from somewhere. And and sure, Ashish. I mean, we were discussing about this, and what what would what would be your chain of thought in this direction versus build so versus I think, buy in this? Um, the organization took a decision uh, six seven years back, and it was not that we had the resources or we wanted to build, and uh, mm. nor that we had a vision of how to utilize it. Mm. The the requirement at that point in time was our current providers were getting out of hand in terms of servicing the kind of data that we had. Right. So um, when the decision was made, decision was made to just keep uh, the ship running, mm. the engine running. And uh, today, and I think it could be learning for somebody who's planning to do, but we can definitely say today uh, we are able to serve better. Mm. And now we are passing on that legacy and intelligence to other hospital chains as well. Yeah, and that's a great journey actually. And what, what I have seen is, at times when the decision such as this has to be made, it also depends on how soon would you like to go to market. Uh, and when you do decide to go to market with an off-the-shelf product, there you need to know that it won't support all use cases. So we'll have to have to make a conscious call what use cases they are and, and shortlist because your priority is to go to market faster. Uh, I have seven minutes left and I have a lot more questions, but uh, but in interest of time, let's get into uh, the rapid fire. So this, by the way, this question has no right answers. Uh, I have some seven of them here, and I think we should take about a minute. But here, please, whoever wants to answer to it, please do. And again, as I said, there is no right answer here. So no hamper also. Huh, sorry. Hamper. <laughs> there are some. There are. Well, I mean, we got to take collective responsibility <laughs> towards it. So do you feel businesses are embarking on this journey of big data and AI due to, com due to competition or peer pressure? Peer pressure. Uh, competition for Competition. Me. I think, uh, so after COVID, you know, a lot of brands or a lot of companies have realized that everything is going digital and uh, that's why they are now more aware of data and how they should use it, et cetera. So it's a mix of competition and, and you know, digitalization due to COVID as well. Got it, got it. I thought, I thought this was going to be funny. I think a lot of, so my answer will not be correct. It'll be a little funny. I think a lot of guys are getting into this journey so that they can uh, waste the money that they have. <laughs> <laughs> it's that shiny card that I want because my neighbor has it. <laughs> so true, so true. Uh, which industry do you feel has embraced this big data and AI effectively? I think AdTech has done a lot, right? Uh, then uh, BFSI is doing a lot as well. Uh, I would say pharma, uh, we are seeing a lot uh, progressively. Um, yeah, uh, e-commerce, of course. Got it. Yep. Uh, I think uh, all the uh, major players, right? your Google's, Amazon's of the world. High tech. The, yeah. uh, so they obviously are using it very well. Uh, BFSI, like you said, I was reading somewhere, uh, you know, some uh, global uh, data survey which was done. So apparently some 23% of the overall big data uh, sort of revenues right. are driven by BFSI companies. Right. So to that extent, there is a huge amount of investment uh, on this side yeah. of things for BFSI. And end of the day, you know, just maybe, I know this is rapid fire, but 
I'll take 15 seconds maybe to go back to the previous point, uh, you know, the shiny new car. Uh, I would potentially put it slightly differently. It's about whether the consumer is buying your car or your competitor's car. Mm. And for that, I need to understand the consumer better. So if I don't invest in understanding the consumer better, and you know, like we've said uh, at, the, at the top of the conversation, you know, the time to market is very critical. So somebody else will go ahead and sell their car ahead of you. True, true. Makes sense. Which industry do you feel is not going to reap any benefit at this point in time? A very controversial, and you may choose not to answer also. That's fine. Any industry that you feel is not going to reap benefit right now? Pass. Can't think of. Uh, the, this, sorry, you're going to say? I would say that uh, for you know, very large B2B uh, sort of industries, their use cases are limited hmm. as opposed to B2C companies. But having said which, everybody has uh, need in varying degrees, and that's why, you know, every company will have their own strategy. And right. to varying degrees, there needs to be investment, investment. into smart data. Even during elections also, now a lot, yeah, of, lot of big data exactly. will get converted yeah. to smart data and will be used. You get, you, you create videos now based upon how the consumption of that data is essentially. Absolutely true. Yeah. How, when would you imagine this would have happened, right, if you thought of it? <laughs> so, do you roll your eyes if someone starts selling you use cases of big data or smart data? Or uh, rather, the question is more, what facial expression would you make when someone is selling big data or smart data? <laughs> to you. So is it roll your eyes or no, is it like? My reaction is curiosity, right? I would want to understand what they're doing, how they're doing it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there are more use cases still to be solved, essentially, is what that is. Yeah, yeah many. Sure. We are just starting. Got it. <laughs> For me, I think uh, what I am more interested in is in how other industries are using, are using it. it. Fair enough. So you know, whenever someone is wanting to have a discussion, I would be more interested not in terms of what they are doing for BFSI, but what they are doing for, say, a healthcare or, yeah. say, a net tech. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think I'm always curious to know. No. Got it. Always. Uh, do, you feel, do you feel we have enough pool, talent pool in India uh, to manage the, the big data? What do you feel about it? Is, it? is it fantastic, good, or bad? I think just throw any problem at us. We are always good at good it. at solving it. Yeah. So um, we we are good. We will be fantastic for sure. Fair enough. Any take? I think there is a lot of talent in India. Uh, yeah. What I see is that you know uh, we should have more and more apprentice uh, you know kind of programs where students and apprentices are able to work with the industry uh -huh. and really because you know whatever I've learned, whatever I've done, I've learned through my job, uh, right? right? So I think that's an urgent need for us to do it, for sure. Got it, got it, got it. Another? I think we have shortage of talent, shortage. for sure. I, I feel that too. I think it's, it, it operates in cohorts where some parts are, we are really good at. And uh, if you take specific technologies and look for talent in it, there is shortage. Uh, and the shortage has driven up whatever their asks are as well. So it, it is becoming a tough spot to be in, essentially. Yeah, I, I mean, oh, while, while I'm saying that, I'll not say that we are not producing enough, yeah. but we are exporting a lot more than more we more should. Than two. That's true. Uh, a fun one here. Between Darius III and Alexander the Great, or would he still be the Great if he had access to big data? If they had access to big data or AI, who would have won the war? <laughs> so I'll rephrase this. Uh, between Darius III and Alexander, who would have won the war if they had access to big data and AI? This is 329 BC, so. <laughs> no, pro if that time there would have been access to data and AI, probably a peacemaker would have prevailed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what a word. We, we needed uh, them to also have, uh, you know, Instagram and TikTok. There then there would have been a chance of no war. <laughs> <laughs> if I took a very controversial stand, I think, I think Alexander would have still won uh, because he was actually in it. Uh, he was leading from the front, so chances are he would, have, he would have been thinking about what the vision would be towards winning the war and then trying to 
kind of use big data the way it is. No? It's debatable, no? <laughs> you're already, I already know what your next move is. <laughs> right. Uh, which department in the company would you completely offload to GPT uh, and make that as a primary touch point? It could be internal, external, but what, what department would you completely offload to GPT? Again, I'm not please sure. feel free to pass. <laughs> That's fine too. I'm not sure if completely, but I think a fair amount of the MIS work which is done uh, can be done, you know. Uh, Financial analytics or, yes. got it. A fair amount of, I, I would say, you know, dashboarding, for example, right. and, you know, a lot of the MISs uh, that the team spends so many hours to create. Or, uh, you know, now we are seeing some use cases in terms of PPTs getting yeah. generated Related at to, a click. Uh, how good or bad they are, that's a d uh, discussion yeah. for another day. Got just add on top of it all the mundane jobs. <laughs> because you're going to see those Excels day yeah. in, day out. You're yeah. going to see those PPTs day in, day out. Yeah. All, everything, like, which I will not come to office for. Right. Let's finish them off. Repeatable, repeatable tasks, essentially. Yeah. That, true. Uh, this is the last set of questions. We are two minutes over time. I'm sorry. Uh, do I still have time? Oh man, she's okay. <laughs> so let's let's take those questions then. Yeah. Uh, All right, some special come we'll, up questions coming from the audience, I believe. We'll take we'll take. I mean, there are many here, so I'll I'll try my best to answer these offline. Uh, the question is how to use the data that helps us to navigate and optimize uh, to increase the latency with the help of Gen AI or follow the compliance as as follow the compliance. I mean, okay. So basically I think to interpret this it would be what would help uh, optimize and navigate using Gen AI? What, what kind of uh, data helps to do that? Uh, look, so uh, Gen AI is something which is um, still, I would say, uh, a fair amount in its nascency. The problem, so while Gen AI can help solve for a lot of things, and we are, uh, you know, every day we come across new use cases where it is getting used, uh, the problem that, you know, AI or Gen AI will always have is that we do not know, you know, what has gone into delivering the outcome. You will only see the outcome, mm. right? So especially where we are looking at um, analytics, what sort of understanding has gone into processing the data? What are the data signals which have been captured? And on what basis has that outcome been given to you is not known to us as humans. Mm. That is not something that you get from the machine. And that for me is uh, something which we need to carefully consider. So if we go into the market just based on the responses that we get there, uh, there lies a risk of it also not working at yeah. some points in time. Yeah, the hallucinations or, uh, or the, the artifacts of Gen AI essentially. There's another question here. Uh, how will uh, smart data slash AI and big data in collaboration impact media and advertising ecosystem. So would you want to take that? No, I think uh, it's already impacting a lot, right? Meaning all the big tech are using AI uh, yeah. progress, you know, extensively. And so uh, the more the data comes in in terms of digital format, it can be used to understand the right consumer to be targeted, right creative to be uh, you know, communicated, and also in analysis that, you know, which are the segments which are really working well for you. So already so much of usage of, um, you know, AI for media is happening. Can I, can I yeah, please yeah, add please. something? So, uh, you know, we, we are in a world where uh, we, we see probably about 150 to 200 ads a day on an average for that 650, 700 million Indians that we are. Right. And probably some of... Uh, those who, who consume internet so much more uh, probably see a lot more ads than they should, right? Uh, we are also uh, getting into a, a situation where a lot of us don't want to see so many ads and we, we have blind spot for those ads. 
uh, if okay, AI with big data can help a marketer reach out to the right guy, minimize the waste, it essentially means that I am not going to serve so many ads and still reach out to the right guy. Uh, I am ready to pay the money that I was going to pay for those three, four, five additional impression instead of reaching out to that one guy, mm. uh, to that one impression, which will essentially mean that industry at some point of time will be able to reduce the, the collision of ads, reduce the, the frequency of ad and increase the yield. Mm. Right and improve the user experience. This is possible. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. Right. <laughs> right. But this is a very, very strong use case for uh, you know marketing Marketing platforms to look at. Right. While while I'm saying that it's not like uh, going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take a lot longer. But yeah, a a lot of uh, investment will have to go from uh, you know tech platforms for that. And and I will to say that I will reduce the number of impressions. Uh, I, I have many more questions here, but sorry, apologies. I, we are six minutes over time. Thank you so much, panel. Uh, it was an amazing round uh, with, with fantastic experience from there. And thank you so much.